Welcome to the Earth and Flax Studio. Today is a design discussion day here in the shop, and I'm going to walk you through our roofing and siding system. Now, this is coming from input from timber framers and builders that we know or have worked with. Uh, it, there's definitely some inspiration from passive home design as well as our own general uh, building experience over the years. This video is not designed to tell you how to build. It is really just an example of how we might be able to avoid plastics and other arguably unhealthy, unsustainable materials in our build process. The goal is to get us thinking about how we might be able to take traditional building materials and techniques and blend them with modern building technology and requirements. I think that we can build with natural and sustainable materials and still create healthy and energy efficient structures. The two can go hand in hand. Here is our model. We've got our roofing system here, our siding system on the side there. You have to use your imagination a little bit, but I'm gonna walk you through our different layers in the, uh, the layer cake here. So our roofing system really starts above our joists. Consider this our you know, in tim uh, interior timbers and our roofing system, because this is exposed ceiling and rafters, really begins up here. So these are our timber rafters. Uh, our first step is a red oak tongue and groove. This is going to be our ceiling treatment and it will just have the Viking purified linseed oil applied as the finish. Our next step, most uh, builders are going to be using some kind of plastic or petroleum based membrane here as a air barrier. We wanted to avoid that as we're worried about um, all the moisture inside creating mold and mildew issues. And um, an alternative might be uh, rosin paper or just a paper-based product. The issue or um, criticism of something like that is that it will sort of break down over time. So what we were able to do is create a, uh, or what I'm calling the earth and flax linoleum. And this is uh, linseed oil paint impregnated in a recycled fiber or paper base. And we're using this as our sort of breathable air barrier at this stage here in the roofing system. Next up, we have our uh, bays for the majority of our insulation. This co could be compressed or expanded depending on what insulation requirements you have in your area, what kind of R value is required for your project. Now we could probably have a whole video just on insulation. Um, and many of you might see that we're working with rock wool insulation today. We've got our bats here. We have our comfort board, rigid comfort board up there that we'll get to in a minute. And uh, to keep it kind of simple, I would argue that rock wool is simply the best option that is most readily available in North America. And most importantly, at least from my perspective, is if it gets wet, it can dry out, which is not the case for a lot of insulation products. There are some really interesting and exciting uh, alternatives uh, available in Europe, and we might start to see more and more of them here. But as of right now, uh, this might be our, you know, best option based on availability, based on performance. Our next layer here is a conventional plywood. This is really to just give rigidity for your uh, two inch comfort board insulation to sit upon. Maybe you could leave this layer out, but we really did feel that it was necessary for a nice base to um, then lay out our insulation. We have some conventional tar paper here, which again, we're trying to avoid petrochemicals. Uh, this is one compromise and using this here uh, gave us sort of confidence uh, to actually use a different type of tar paper on our sheathing and siding because we were so unimpressed. Um, <laughs> for those who have used conventional and modern tar paper, you know, it's not a great material to work with. And um, so we're really excited to have developed maybe something that would be a, a more natural, a more sustainable alternative. So we have one layer of uh, modern tar paper here before we lay out our two inches of Rockwell comfort board insulation, and that is going to be continuous. It's going to have no break across our entire roofing surface. And as you can see, it also meets uh, and is continuous for our siding system as well. And we'll talk more about that in, in a little bit. 
So the fasteners that we're using to achieve this are uh, these specialty screws from Rotoblast. Uh, we were able to source them online. And the idea is that they have these specialty barbs at the top and we'll screw them through our furring strips here and they will uh, allow much easier adjustment as we do not want to compress our comfort board insulation. It will impact the R value and impact the effectiveness of our continuous insulation. We've got our air gap here and as you can see our decking is actually our painted pine tongue and groove so our painted Lindsay Oil painted surface is facing down just in case any moisture ever got here, a little added uh, additional protection. And then on top of that, we were asked by our roofing team that they would like a nice sturdy base to attach the metal roof to. And we did let them use the modern sort of heat rated membrane that they use in their work. Whenever you're working with different teams or you're hiring different people, you do need to find a compromise with what they are comfortable using. So we have a bit of a compromise right on top of our pine tongue and groove linseal painted decking. Um, we'll have a modern vapor barrier uh, applied on top of this before our two inch uh, standing seam metal roof is installed. Here at Earth and Flax, we love a metal roof. It is probably our most favorite roofing option. It is not so readily available depending on where you are in the country. Maybe the materials or just the skill set is uh, not, you know, easy for you to find wherever you are. Um, we are pretty lucky here in Pennsylvania uh, as we have a decent amount of Amish and Mennonite crews who have experience. So we did have a um, Amish crew do our uh, metal roof installation and you do always want to make sure that you have a nice air gap. You can vent um, and have a venting system uh, for the, the base of the roof and your soffit as well as at the top um, where in our case it will be venting along the existing masonry wall. If you have any questions about anything we discussed today about the design that we're working on for this project, feel free to reach out. We'd love to hear from you. Leave a comment below and if you want to follow along and see more of our videos for this project, please like and subscribe. Mm -hmm.